many tales from Scottish folklore concerning the fairies, tell of strange beings and spirits interrupting the mundane day-to-day -day lives of ordinary Scots. But very seldom does the opposite occur, where the lost or confused Scotsman interrupts the fantastical existence of the she, the Feast of Linga. Sometime during the 18th century, far to the north in Shetland, there were two fishermen who lived in the land of Luna, one named Willie and the other was called Tom. At that time, both of these young fishermen were rivals for the hand of a local beauty, a young woman by the name of Osla. Every fishing expedition between them would be turned into a contest, with the men trying to prove who could better provide for the woman they were both infatuated with. But these tiresome competitions would come to a head on one cold October evening. Both Tom and Willie decided to go out fishing and this would prove once and for all who would win the fair lady's hand. The pair rowed the boat to what they knew was good fishing waters and began to bait the lines. But before any hook could be cast, a terrible wind rose and the sea became wild. The men began to row for their lives, heading for the nearest shelter, which happened to be the islet of Linga. After a short time of being battered back and forth by the rough sea, the men were thankful to reach land safely. Quickly they hauled the boat ashore and grabbing their equipment ran towards a small wooden hut. There the weary fishermen could finally rest and review their situation. They had no food and no means of kindling a fire. The island and the hut were only ever inhabited during the summer months when the mackerel fishers would stay there. So all the pair had was their cold, wet clothing, some fishing line and an old fowling piece. The pair decided to sleep through the night and hopefully return home on the next day. But as they woke on the following morning, the storm seemed to be worse than ever. With each passing hour, the situation looked worse and worse. At one point Willie suggested that they could try and shoot a gull for food, but Tom quickly explained they only had one cartridge to shoot with, they had no fire to cook with, and the gulls tended the land during a storm. By late afternoon in the second day, the pair could not stand each other's company one second longer. Both decided that the other would have to leave the hut, and a wild fight broke out. But after an hour or so, it became obvious that neither man would win. Eventually the pair slumped to the floor, both black and blue. There they agreed to share the hut for another day, but this was not to be. Willie woke early in the third morning, and to his delight, discovered that the storm had gone. A wicked thought entered the Scotsman's mind. He crept slowly and stealthily out of the hut and ran to the beach. There he found the small boat. With much haste and great strength, he launched it into the sea. It was at this time that Tom woke from his slumber and was gladdened to no longer hear the howling of the wind. As the young man stirred from his spot upon the floor, he suddenly noticed that Willie had gone. With a sinking feeling in his chest, Tom threw open the door and rushed to the beach. The boat had gone and with it his heartless companion. As Tom looked up from the marks in the sand where the boat had been, he could see in the distance the silhouette of a small manned rowing boat heading to Luna. The poor man sank to his knees in despair. The islet would not be visited for at least another six months. Tom spent the majority of the day kneeling on the beach, his mind lost in a world of disappearing possibilities. As darkness closed in around the island, Tom was pulled from his despair by an icy cold breeze. He got up and made for the hut. Upon entering, the poor man collapsed 
and as he lay there, tired and hungry, he drifted off. At the very stroke of midnight, Tom was suddenly awoken by a blinding light. All around him he could sense movement, and his ears were filled with the sounds of plates and cups clinking and clanking. Meanwhile, in the background to all of this, Tom could hear a strange form of music. As the man's eyes finally adjusted to the light, he beheld a great table covered with platters and jugs of silver and gold. Seated at the table were a collection of strange ethereal beings who were laughing and singing. Then the door swung open and the room turned silent as all the figures around the table rose. A female of an indescribable beauty walked through the door and slowly to the head of the table. As she passed each of the dinner guests, they bowed deeply. Once she reached the grand chair at the head of the table, the beings all sat in unison. A great splendour of food then appeared upon the table, and just as the feast was about to begin, a scream of horror erupted from the creature closest to the young fisherman. The atmosphere changed in an instant. The calm movements and eerie song was replaced by wild flailing and shouting. Tom finally became aware that it was his very presence that was the cause of this abrupt change. At a single unknown word from the beautiful female, the other guests began to rush towards the human intruder. As the strange creatures moved nearer the man, Tom in a fit of panic grabbed his fowling piece and fired. In an instant the light was gone. All around him was now darkness, silence and solitude. It was about this time that Willie landed safely back on Luna. There he would relate a tragic tale of his own making to the locals, which explained the untimely and accidental death of his beloved friend Tom. The story was generally believed and Willie waited no time in continuing his quest to gain the hand of fair Osla. Osla's father had always regarded Willie with some favour but the young maiden herself had always turned a deaf ear to many of Willie's previous proposals. She knew that she did not love him and had become haunted by the uneasy suspicion that her true love, Tom, had been the victim of foul play. In spite of all of her objections, Osla's father had granted Willie his daughter's hand in marriage. The night this was all arranged, the poor woman cried herself into a sad and longing sleep. But there, she was met with a strange dream of a small islet and the man she loved. Early the following morning, Osla left her home and gathered Tom's friends and family. She proceeded to tell them of her dream and begged them to help her sail to the islet. Some of the friends, despite caring for the man, were still reluctant to help. Supposing Tom was abandoned and Osla's divined location was accurate. By this time, Tom would have died from exposure and starvation, which was also their own worry in sending a boat out that far during the cold months. The young woman persisted and claimed that she would go alone if no one was willing to aid her. Eventually, her requests prevailed and a boat was launched. It was manned by Tom's friends and under the direction of Osla. She guided the boat far from the shores of Luna and towards the islet of Linga. As the boat got nearer the islet, Osla and the friends of Tom spotted a figure standing up on the beach. The man began waving his arms, jumping up and down as the boat came closer. It was only then that all in the boat recognised it was their missing friend, and a great cheer of joy went up. Tom met his friends on the beach, and after the first eager greetings passed, Osla and the men expressed their shock, not only about finding Tom, but finding him in such good health. The deserted man had never looked better. Some even suggested that he had gained weight while trapped on the island. On the return journey to Luna, Tom recounted his strange adventure 
beginning with the storm, continuing with Willie's betrayal, and ending on his otherworldly encounter with the she. He then explained that after the odd creatures disappeared, they had left behind them a great banquet, almost untouched. So for the last few days, he had satisfied his hunger by eating the most delicious food he had ever tasted from the fairy feast. The party were received with much rejoicing upon their return to Luna, and that very week, Osla and Tom were married. Willie was outed for his lies and deception. As punishment, he was outcast from the village. Some tell that from that day on, Willie's life became sad, lonely and desperate, which led him to an early and well-deserved grave. Thank you for listening, and a special thank you to my patrons who help support the channel and these stories 